class of social distancing measures have been put in place. Seating, as you know, is limited. Reminder before the meeting begins, we ask that you silence your cell phone. At this time, we will be read in our invocation by Council Member Scott and our Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member Crosby. For those of you that wish to participate, you may now stand at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for life, for health and strength. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the great city of Lake City. We thank you, dear God, for letting us be able to see another year. And we thank you, Lord, for all the accomplishments that we have done during the past year. We pray to Heavenly Father, as we go into this meeting, that you will give us a mind of love and understanding, that we all may not agree, but be able to understand and, and love one another in spite of. We pray to Heavenly Father, you will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council Member Richard Cook. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Nicole Singletary. Present. Council Member Sandra Fleming Crosby. Present. Council Member Yamiki Robinson. Present. Council Member Wilhelmina Scott. Present. And Council Member William Askins. Present. Mayor Anderson, I find there to be a quorum present. Thank you. At this time, we need a motion to adopt the agenda as printed. Move for who to adopt. Second. Second. Properly moved and second. All those in favor, by show of hands. Next item on the agenda is um, our approval of minutes for Wednesday, March 3rd, 2020, Special City Council meeting, and Tuesday, February 9th, 2021, Regional City Council meeting. Move to approve the minutes. Second. Properly moved and second. Questions or discussion? None. All those in favor by show of hands. Next item is our public comment period. Comments are limited to two minutes per person. And no personal or verbal attack will be entertained. The council is interested in hearing your concerns. The speaker should not expect council action or deliberation on subject matter brought up during the public comment period. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the city administration and may be scheduled for a future agenda. Please state your name and address for the record when you come forward. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Margaret Jones. I sat 713 Ronald McNeil Boulevard, Lake City, South Carolina. Uh, my first concern was when, um, when we talk about progress, one thing we had on here was affordable houses. When you're talking about affordable houses, we're not talking about houses that are affordable for the citizens here in Lake City. We're not talking about houses that cost $600 or more, $700 or more, $500 or more. That's not affordable for us here in Lake City. It's not. So you talk about affordable housing, you got to think about that, what we're making in this area, so you can look up that at another time. And then also, you talk about transparency. When we have things that we're dealing with here in the city, we as citizens want to be, know what's going on. And when we're looking for answers, we expect, you know, transparency. We expect that we have open door policy, that we can come in and talk to you. When we come in and talk to you, we get an answer. Not months later, we don't get an answer. Okay, the next thing is that when you're talking about the sewer, okay, out of the city limit, I say out of the city limit. The sewer is bad out in that area, out of the city limit. We have had no upgrade in that area in years. When you're talking about improving the sewer for other places and whatever, we have not did anything for people out of the city limits, the citizen, the citizen out of the city limit, when people improving the sewer. Then also we're talking about providing sewer and water for the new hospital in USC. Okay, we want to know how is that going to be being paid. 
and he had to make sure that by providing water for the new hospital, that the citizens do not have an increase in their water sewer bill when we are paying this. And I think that's all of my questions. I think I wrote down here. If I have any more concern, you know, I'll come to y'all in person. But you know, due to the pandemic, it's hard to get to see each, you know, have a meeting in person. So, you know, we know that, you know, that, you know, have an uh, impact on a lot of stuff too. But we cannot take this pandemic and use it as an excuse for not letting us as citizens get an answer to our question and not letting our citizens be able to voice our concern. My last thing, that I love you, I'm going to miss you. Um, when I come to you and the mayor, I love y'all. Y'all have been transparent. When I come to y'all, y'all give me an answer. And I also wish our new administrator would be the same. Miss you. And thank you, all mayor. Good evening, Mary Thomas. I'm going to light him on the tree. Okay. Well, you're back again. I want to thank all of y'all because some of y'all said you missed me, and I didn't even believe you did. That's my new question. But uh, this had two thousand that treat us well at all, and we all had things, you know, among the summer slots or having them as friends and everything else. But could the council provide us with five minutes? Two minutes is not enough for us to really address some of our issues. Because sometimes we have issues that are hot button issues and two minutes don't allow that. And I wish you would consider that as well. Um, I'm going to take you back off model with the hospital and their water on some answers. But guess what? Stratton picked up a complex. How about that water? Who will be helping us with that? I mean, some of our Water bills are outrageous. And we have people living on fixed income, raise your hand. And we just stand out of it. Because the first of the year, we deal with Medicare, high cost of our medicine and everything else. So I want to know about Stratton, as well as the hospital, as well as the hospital. Because if I'm not incorrect, Stratton, we provide water to them. So I want that issue addressed as well. And I'm going to talk to Jason Springs about it because he's an iconic county. You know, he's an opportunity person. Last thing, Stephanie Snow, and I met before any of y'all, was at a suspicious conference. A friend of mine come running around the country. We got to meet Miss Madden. I gave her my phone number, she gave me her phone number and information. Me and Stephanie have had many a battle. Many a battle. But, you know, lost respect for each other doing that. And she knew I genuinely care about the city. So Stephanie, you know I'm in Columbia, and I do miss you, but you just one phone call away once you give me that number. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is for me. Thank you, and thank you for your service to Lake City. We don't always have to agree, but we made it a point not to be disagreeable. And for this, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tiana McClan. Um, I am the president and CEO of um, WMCT Outreach. And I just wanted to introduce myself and my organization. Um, we are here to help serve the community and those who need our help. Um, be it those that are on the streets, be it those who are working. Um, in December, we had a very successful toy drive, toy giveaway, thanks to um, Councilwoman Yamika Robinson. In October, we had a very successful coat drive as well. Um, and we are um, collecting non-perishable foods to be able to feed the community. Um, and because of minor setback, we are working from home right now. But in the very near future, we are hoping to be able to have an office um, in King Street and hopefully one in um, Stone and Power as well. Um, and hopefully, and we are looking off, um, we are looking forward to be able in the very near future as well to have a shelter. This is something that I initially started out doing in 2009. 
and I do see that Lake City needs that as well. So we are here to feed the community, to we do we feed them, we clothe you, and we do mentoring as well. So it's WMCT Outreach, and again, um, my name is Kyle McClam, so thanks for having me this evening. The address for your... Well, we were on at Pallister Street because of a minor setback. We are working from home right now. So. And can you can just put it back on the Okay. All right. Yes. And I do have a business card as well for my um, website um, on there as well. Okay. Thank you. And can I give this to you all? Because um, yes. again, we are collecting non perishable foods to be able to serve the community soon. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Magazine Avenue. Hello, Council Mayor. At this time, I'd like to speak to um, Ms. Stephanie. Um, this is kind of an emotional time because you know that the things that you have done here in Lake City, you know, every time it was an event that was going on, anytime we came to you for any clearance for the event, you always stepped in. You always, and not just stepped in, you were there <coughs> with us. And the community, it's going to miss you. And we just want, my thing is, I like to give people their flowers while they're alive. That's right. And she's here. So I want to give her her flowers now. Mm -hmm. And what I did, I had is some citizens that signed this card thanking you for everything that you've done. I want you to know that they, we will miss you. And anytime you need, just let us know. And there's some more business owners that's going to come up and speak. I might have to spell that for you later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 104 West Main Street. I own Oleo Studio and I am currently the president of the Downtown Merchants Association, even though we've been kind of out of work for a little while. Um, I kind of want to just continue what Roosevelt said. Stephanie, you were a joy to work with. I've seen you go head to head with some very tough people and honestly was like, very intimidated by you, but also very impressed by you because then I saw you with those same people laughing and having a good time and working together with the community. I'm going to miss you greatly because the previous administrator that I worked with uh, never quite worked as hard as you did and worked well with the business owners and with the community members. I feel like we had a really good thing going and I'm going to miss you and I know a lot of other business owners are going to miss you and we have just a little <coughs> gift that um, we, I made, but it's from all the business owners, and I just want you to know that you made a huge impact here. So if you ever want to come back, we'll take you with open arms, and we just appreciate all the hard work that you did. So thank you. Thank you. And I don't want to press. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council members, um, new Council members. Uh, Scott Strip, I'm sorry, 414 uh, West Main. Okay. Yeah, um, that's my wife said I was getting a little big, so um, that's weight that she can prove to me that I've gained. Um, uh, welcome y'all to the council meeting. Um, I wanted to, I was here last month and explained to you about law enforcement, two guys that um, stepped up to the plate um, for a two-year-old that we um, did a rescue for that was pretty pretty intense situation and Lake City stepped up to the plate all the way to Florence. Um, well, lo and behold, uh, this past month, even during the pandemic, um, most of y'all know I cook around here and everybody likes my funnel cakes and deep fried Oreo cookies and french fries and anything else that anybody wants. Well, that was taken from me. About $29,000 worth of equipment and a trailer was stolen right off of um, our property down on West Main. Um, we were about, didn't notice it for about 15 days, so we were behind the eight ball for 15 days. As um, soon as I realized it, because uh, I was actually going to cook for someone and went to get some stuff and noticed my stuff was stolen, so I immediately looked on the cameras, um, got in touch with the officers that night, they came and did a report. But this is how important law enforcement is to this community, period. Um, Patrick 
I think he's here. Patrick Miles stepped up and came and he said he got all the information. He worked with the county. Um, and within 48 hours, now we're 15 days behind the eight ball, within 48 hours, Patrick had already made two arrests. Um, confiscated phones, confiscated this. Um, from that, uh, we, he was able to get three more people, five people total. Two minutes, I'm done. Um, but anyway, I appreciate it. And uh, Stephanie, thank you for all that you've done. We appreciate you, and you will deeply be missed. Thank y'all. Okay, any other comments? No, thank you. Have a positive comment. Any other comments? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Curtis Fox Nixon, and I am residing at 4033 North Old Georgetown Road in Spring, right around the corner from you all. Uh, many of you know me, so I come before you and everyone today to express some grave concerns with the way the city is following policies and procedures. Um, and I have strong evidence that supports the fact that the city is not operating as it should be. As a matter of fact, it is operating out of bounds versus um, how we should be operating in an ethical manner. And I was hoping to come before you this evening with a legal right to know how the council plans on handling this matter as if, as if it continues to be ignored. It's going to really bring harm and substantial disruption upon the city. And I truly care for this city and its employees and its residents I have since day one. I hold every one of them at heart. As you can see, they do demand transparency and we have portrayed that as a matter of what we do, but we aren't acting on it. So it's important to actually speak and act as you speak. And I have brought these issues to the table today because it's important that we recognize that and that we do begin to follow our policies and procedures. Um, with that said, I do have a request from you. I know eventually we're going to vote to go into executive session, and I'm going to request to actually present some substantial information to you all there, if I may do that. I couldn't hear you. Mr. Mayor, such, such can be addressed in executive session. Yeah. Well, I make a motion to allow him to address his concerns in executive session. Can I get a second? You can't make a motion because it says here that nothing to be discussed. You make that motion when we get back to the motion. You can you can make that you make a motion. You can't discuss it. No, you can't make it until we get ready. So when we get ready to go to executive session. That's that's what I said. Understood. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Michael Nero, 143 Brown Street. The problem that I come before you today is that just like uh, we had someone come up and speak earlier about transparency, I just wish that we all could have transparency when it's dealing with the city. Uh, because not, not one person is held responsible of the city. The ones that we elected in office, them is the ones that is held to be irresponsible you know, for us as citizens of Lake City. And all that I ask is that whenever something is going on within the city, that all of y'all is made aware of it. I don't need y'all being behind the eight ball and the citizen knowing more than y'all. I would like for y'all to know what's going on just as well. That's it, thank you. Yes, I'm standing here on behalf of Lake City Housing Authority. I'm the superintendent of Housing Authority. And I would just like to just, I hate to see Ms. Snow leave, um, but she has done such a great job and has worked with us so well. And we truly going to miss you. Um, and there's not one person that I know that 
was able to do what she did while she was here, and we just thank her for that. But one thing that I learned out of that is uh, God never closes the door without opening another. And we want to thank um, Mary and Council. I think you have chosen Mr. Home Hill, which is going to uh, kind of follow behind her. And we thank um, for all that you have done and, and what you are not about to embark on. Um, that we will be able to work with you as well as, as we did Miss Snowden because she did such a wonderful job and, and we truly gonna miss you from housing is really gonna miss you for all that you have done and all that you have participated in our endeavor to try to push housing authority forward because that's what we are <laughs> trying to do is trying to build Lake City. And as they said about transparent, we definitely want to do that. And um, we pretty sure that Mr. Hall is going to follow their same steps, and we appreciate you for what you're going to do as well. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. What's your name? Clarence Jewett. Clarence Jewett. Okay. Anyone else at this time we're going to do the presentation? Mayor and Council, uh, tonight uh, we have with us representatives for the London Point Housing Development, uh, which is headed up by Mark Fountain, uh, and also we're going to have a presentation by Brian Cable, who is the engineer for Trident LLC. Mr. Cable? Good evening, City Council and uh, Mayor Anderson and uh, residents of Lake City. I'm Brian Cagle, uh, engineer with Cagle Consulting Engineers in, uh, in Florence. And the uh, property that you're looking at on the screen is uh, London Point uh, subdivision. This is just the existing. Do we have the page two? One more? Oops. No, just that. We didn't have that. Okay, back, back up to that then. I can talk on that. Sorry, we missed the, uh, go back to the, right there. Thank you. Um, the property is the two right in the middle, uh, two properties that are rectangle shape and then sort of a, uh, uh, I guess a key shape there. But it's a two acre track, the two combined, and apologize that we don't have the proposed site plan there, but it's a um, 15, we've actually got 14 or 15, we're trying to see if we can get the 15th lot in there, but it's gonna be a 1,450 square foot uh, single story uh, homes with a one car garage and the uh, lot size is between five and 6,000 square foot lot size. And um, again, it's 14 or 15 lots uh, with uh, a street that, uh, actually, you know, I've got, since we don't have it on the screen, I can bear with me one second. We're still in the design, uh, final design phase.
Again, that's for Trident, uh, and that's that's the uh, elevation view of of the home. So I guess better than looking at the uh, 2D plan. That's what the homes will look like. Sale price. Uh, do we have sale price? Projected sale price. Yeah. They'll be between 140 and 160, and they'll be mostly the fronts will be brick out of fronts, vinyl sides, and they'll have granite countertops and hardwood floors and architectural single roofs. And there'll be three bedrooms, three bedroom homes. And for those of you who are that that's the ones, that's the ones that are going on London, right? Yes, I'm sorry, Mayor. Yes, London, uh, London Avenue. So, hence the name. It's off of Graham Road in London. Yeah. And, excuse me, uh, Council. Uh, the bank that we're working with, they're trying to see if they could qualify for 100% financing to qualified individuals on these homes. So we are pushing that real hard with the bank, and the bank's trying to work in that direction. Um, in doing so. And the entrance will also be a brick front entrance coming in. The, the road will be paved with curbing as well for this neighborhood. Is that the last uh, slide that we had on? Yes. Okay. And next, do we have time at a point? Or next? Yeah. No. We'll just, just the last point. point. Okay. Okay. That's all we were talking about tonight. Okay. And that's all I had, Mayor. Unless there's any, any questions. questions anyway? well, when you think start construction? Uh, we are uh, finishing the final design on on this subdivision. So, you know, we're looking at uh, you know, timeline, of probably another month or two on finishing up the design, and then go to permitting. And that could take, uh, you know, permitting with, with things that slowed up, but it could take anywhere from 30 to 60 days on that. Um, so we're looking at a little bit later in the year, start construction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, just to, just to mention that there are uh, funds available through the State Housing Authority. Um, with some uh, down payments assistance and also for funding for them to purchase homes. And also in the housing area, there is the state of South Carolina has a website, which I think it's on the Facebook page, that gives rental and mortgage assistance to those that suffer with COVID issues. Okay, so at this time we're not ready to give our legislative Mayor and Council, I'd like to, to bring to the legislative floor uh, your, for your consideration for second and final reading, ordinance number 2020-556, an ordinance for the City of Lake City, South Carolina, seeking the approval to purchase one 2020 Peter B. 348 from Amic Equipment Company in Columbia, South Carolina. This unit will be utilized for uh, uh, alternate weeks and emergency purposes for garbage collection and all matters related thereto. Thank you. At this time, the floor is not open to uh, a motion to approve second and final reading, and the ordinance uh, number should be 2021.556. Scrivener's error. Move to approve ordinance 2021.556, second and final reading. Thank you. Property moved and second. Any questions or discussions? If none, all those in favor by show of hands. Next item. Uh, Mayor and Council, ordinance number 2021.557. This is first reading. An ordinance for the city of Lake City, South Carolina, annexing a parcel of land known as Florence County, South Carolina, tax map number 00169 Hereby clear hereby charging the corporate limits 
of the City of Lake City, South Carolina, annexation and other matters related thereto. And we have our lawyer here if anyone has any questions in regards to this annexation request. Okay. Floor is now open for a motion to approve ordinance 2021.5 <coughs> for our first reading. Move to approve ordinance 2021.557 first reading. And if I will just also bring to the attention, this is the site of the formal Florence Darlington Technical College building. This will be the site that the recreation uh, facility will be done at. Property moved and second. Full second. Second. All right, any questions or discussion? That was going to be my question. To kind of elaborate where the parcel of land was, since it didn't state it on here. But Cole Road. Cole Road. 278 Cole Road, the old Florence Darlington Technical Building. Thank you. Okay. Well, questions or discussion? All those in favor by show of hands. Next item. Uh, the next item is resolution 2021 377. Uh, this is the resolution for the City of Lake City, South Carolina, proposing the annexation, um, authorizing the annexation of the parcel of land known as Florence County, South Carolina, tax map number 00169-31271, hereby changing the corporate limits of the City of Lake City, annexation, and all matters related thereto. Uh, this requires a ordinance and a resolution. Thank you. The floor is now open for resolution 2020, I'm sorry, 21.377 20, um, for uh, <coughs> annexation for, uh, for map 0016931-271. Move to approve 2021.377 for resolution. Second. Properly moved and second. Any questions or discussion on it? It actually has the same piece of property. It is, yes, sir. Yeah. All right. All those in favor by show of hands. Next item. Uh, resolution 2021.378. A resolution for the city of Lake City, South Carolina, seeking the approval to adopt the Municipal Association of South Carolina Safety and Wellness Committee Handbook, as well as members with their alternative and all matters related thereto. Floor is now open for a motion to approve ordinance, I'm sorry, resolution 2021.378. Move to approve resolution 2021.378. Second. Properly moved and second. Any questions or discussion on this resolution? If none, all those in favor by a show of hands. Next item. Uh, Mayor Council, resolution number 20, 2021.379, a re resolution for the City of Lake City, South Carolina, seeking to approve the adopt the members of the Grievance Committee and all matters related thereto. Floor is now open for motion to approve resolution 2021.379, uh, resolution of the City of Lake City seeking to approve and adopt the members of the Grievance Committee other matters related there too. Move to approve resolution 2021.379. Second. Properly moved and second. Questions? Questions? Do we have the current um, resolution in place now? Um, I'm not following the question. Uh, don't, don't we already have a um, resolution for um, to adopt the grievance committee? That is what we're presenting here, 2021-379. The previous grievance committee has, uh, has expired. How we have a new list. Okay, how long have they been expired? Mm, I'm not, and I'll have to check on that and get back with you. I can't honestly answer that question. Okay. All right, any other questions? All those in favor by show of hands. Any comments? Next item. Uh, the next item is resolution 2021.380, a resolution establishing the Honorable Gloria H. Washington as the municipal judge for the city of Lake City and all other matters related thereto. Okay, the floor is now open at this time. Move to approve resolution 20. Uh, I haven't finished. 
<laughs> the floor is now open to approve resolution 2021.380. Move to approve resolution 2021.380. Second. Property moved to second. All those in favor, by show of hands. Next item. Uh, Mayor and Council, we have the um, city administrative report, the financial report for the city of Lake City. Listed toward the back of your package. Um, present to you the financial report for the period ending February 28, 2021. Uh, current budget for the revenues of general budget for general fund is six million seven twenty-eight seven fifty. Our year-to-date actual income is four million one fifty one sixty-two. That's sixty-two percent of the budget. Whereas the prior year we brought in three million three seventy-five eight eight five. Uh, we have allocated a fund balance use of 470741 which brings the total budget of $7,199,491. The total year-to-date annual uh, actual amount received uh, or expended out was set, uh, $5,015,000, which is $864 above our revenue. In prior year, we spent $302,550, which was a savings of $73,335. In the water fund, uh, we had budgeted one million five forty nine. We have actual income of nine seventy, which is 63 percent of the budget. Uh, we have expenditures of fifteen forty nine budgeted. We have actual coming out at eight seventy three one seventy eight, a savings of ninety seven thousand five twenty three. Whereas the prior year we had four hundred five thousand. So even with COVID, we we uh, have a ninety seven thousand dollar increase in our revenue. On the sewer side, we budgeted two million seven fifty-eight. We have actual year-to-date income of nineteen seventy, which is seventy-one percent of the budget. We have expenditures budgeted two two million seven fifty-eight. Year-to-date expenditures of one million six seventy, which is sixty percent of the budget, which is three hundred thousand one hundred fourteen um, savings against the revenue, as opposed to last year at the same time five hundred fifty-four thousand. And then um, the bill list, Mayor and Council, we present to you the bill list for your consideration for approval, uh, which is items number one through five. Eight. I'm sorry, one through eight. I'm sorry. For the month of the payout for the month of March, uh, Fuel Man Heritage Digital, Haynesworth Singler Boyd Republic Service RDK which that'll be the last payment for them, Waste Management, South Carolina Municipal Insurance Trust, and the City of Mullins. Thank you. The floor is now open for a motion to approve items 1 through 8 for bills to be approved. I'll make a motion to approve. Pro properly moved and second. Question. City of Mullins. Uh, Mayor and Council, if I could, I'll share with you the actual bill. What this bill is, is a reimbursement to the Mullins. We hired one of their police officers basically straight out of the police academy. And by state law, we're required to reimburse any municipality in regards to that, the funds that they have spent to put him through that class and his payroll hours. So this will be reimbursing them for Caleb, which was hired with the City of Lake City Police Department. Um, one question. Yeah, one the, um, he should be bringing that holistic advance with him. That will be, uh, it is at the City of Mullins, once they receive the check, they will release the best to us. Any other questions? Yeah, my question is, if this guy, this person, I don't know if they do whatever, if they decide to leave next month, uh, are they going to reimburse it? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Uh, that's a good question. How long has he been 
Patrick? He was, when, given, he was given a verbal offer of employment, I think, three weeks ago. And his new hire orientation took place on March the 4th. Any other questions? Do we have um, in place an agreement with, with the officers that if they should leave or terminate within a certain time, if he comes and stays two or three months and leaves? Do we have anything in, in, in place? If we send an officer to the uh, police academy, do we have anything in place to protect us? For the funds that we've spent out law, if they leave. The state law allows you to get reimbursed by the agency that they, I'm sorry, the reason why um, the state passed the law is because you had agencies that were sending officers to the academy and then they were getting poached. So if in fact um, uh, an agency were to um, get Caleb, we could be reimbursed for any of the expenditures that we had, it's up to a year. If you stay, if you're out of the academy, I believe if you work for an agency for more than a year, then it is not that case. But it's a year and under, you, an agency has to be reimbursed, which is why we're having to reimburse Collins. Council, I think that's it for me. Thank you so very much. Going to executive session. Oh, sorry. Oh, public safety update. I apologize. Um, so, real quick, I know y'all already had some highlights on some of the COVID stuff, but I do want to touch on a couple of things just to let you know. Um, I know y'all was covering state data with the address. New confirmed cases in Florence County is three. Confirmed cases in South Carolina is over 451,000. Total confirmed cases in Florence County now is 14,889. New confirmed deaths in South Carolina was three. There was none reported in Florence County. Um, total confirmed deaths in South Carolina is over 7,000. Total confirmed deaths in Florence County right now is 355. Um, since March of 2020, there have been 1,672 reported COVID cases in the 29560 zip code. Um, those that don't know, the beginning of March 8th, appointments to get COVID vaccine can be made by phase 1B. That includes anyone age 55 and up, people with increased, increased risk for COVID disease, frontline workers. Um, the complete list of phase 1A and 1B can be seen on the VHEC webpage. Estimated population for 1B is approximately 2.7 million people. Phase 1C is scheduled to start on April 12th and can include anyone 45 and up. That estimated population for 1C is 1.9 million. <coughs> um, a little brief thing, make sure. I know there's been a lot of questions about COVID, getting the vaccine. There's a process um, on the DHEC page. There's a little tricky the slots fill up very quick um, i can tell you i know lake city walmart cbs all those are allocated spots but the spots fill up extremely fast people were trying to monitor them. one thing you can do um mbsc is not accepting online but mcleod actually has where you can go get the vouchers so if you can refer people that mcleod is a good chance to get the vouchers you might not get it that day but you can do vouchers on certain days. All that is li listed on the um, South Carolina DA page. Um, just to let you know, as far as cover a little bit extra this time with the fire department, um, we responded to most of the routine calls over the past month, but we did have four structure fires, um, two of the small cooking fires, but we also had Dunline rubber, um, the sprinkler system activated and contained that fire, thank goodness. Um, there was very minimal damage, but the sprinkler system did have to be put back online. Um, the most recent structure fire was actually last night. It was at 151 Boulevard Street. That home suffered significant damage. <coughs> um, we had to notify the Red Cross, and that occupant was displaced. But we've had no fatalities since the one at the first of the year, so none this month. Um, there have only been two in Florence County, and one of them was ours. Um, Lake City Police Department, 
Um, helping them out tonight too. Um, in February, they responded to 956 calls to service. Most of these calls being property checks, traffic stops, and domestic calls. The rest are routine calls to service. Any questions about public safety or code? Questions? Thank you. people that are not on the list. So they have to be after three. If people don't show up, they can get the vaccine instead of them, you know, or whatever. That's two different things. Right, Tyler. Clerk, so she can put that on the website. I'm mm -hmm. sure we appreciate that. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Next item is a motion going to the executive session. The South Carolina Freedom of Information Act, section 30. Point dash four dash seventy one two for the specific purpose of discussing employment, appointment, compensation, promotion, demotion, discipline, or release of an employee to provide a legal litigation update and general description of the legal issue. Um, we will have um, Curtis Martin Fox. Yeah. A motion to be made for him to come into executive session, second and, and voted on. Okay, so executive and, session is separate. I'm sorry? The executive session one that I just said is, set, is separate. It's so right, you, two you can do that vote now, okay. as to Mr. Fox, and then we can go into executive session okay. and address. All right, so a motion for Mr. Fox to go into executive session. I make a motion to allow Mr. Fox to enter into executive session. Wait, no, I'm saying, what, a second? Okay, that's what you see. Okay, a second motion. All right, we're properly moving second. All those in favor? Three. All right, so Mr. Fox will not be in the executive session. Uh, but we will be going into executive session. That's right.